Hello, my name is Bailey. Welcome to my channel. Um, I am aware that this wrap up is a month late. Here's the thing. I like kind of legitimately forgot about this thing that I'm supposed to film, you know, like June happened. I read four things in June. I was like, okay, that's great. And then like never filmed a wrap up for it. So I don't want to combine my June and July wrap up because there's just too many books to talk about. Like it's just going to become really messy by the end. So I'm going to be doing a Dune wrap up still. That's where you are right now. <laughs> And yeah, I have four books to talk about. I didn't write any notes for this, and I'm hoping this can be under 20 minutes. Um, let's just do this. I just want to have this as a record. I'm going to try and talk about these as best I can. I just don't have notes for them. So, oops. Okay, so yeah, like I said, I read four things. I read three of them on audiobook and one thing physically. Uh, the physical thing I read was literally like 80 pages, so it wasn't the best reading month quality, you know, quantity-wise, but quality-wise, I did read two really good books, and I'm going to talk about them first, because they're the first two things I read. Uh, so we have Arusha and the End of Time, and Arusha and the Song of Death, by both by Roshani Chakshi. These are the first two books in a four book or five book, I don't know, uh, middle grade series. These were both five stars for me. I'm going to talk about this one first, I suppose. I don't Hmm. Hmm. I don't know how to talk about these because they're a series. Okay, so this book follows Arusha and she is a young girl and she ha kind of has a reputation for lying, making up little stories. And one day these kids come, these kids from her school come to the museum that she lives at and her mom like owns slash works at. And they tell her to prove that the story she said about this lamp at the museum is true. So like, light the lamp, right? So she lights this lamp and she ends up releasing this demon called the Sleeper. This leads her to discovering that she is a reincarnation of one of the Pandava brothers who are ancient warriors. And she needs to unite with her other reincarnated Pandava brothers, but, but they're all sisters in this book, and she needs to stop the sleeper from destroying the world. <laughs> so I love this book. I gave it five out of five stars. Literally love it with my whole ass heart. Um, this book is inspired by Hindu mythology, and the atmosphere is just beautiful. As much as it's middle grade and like there's a lot of joking and humor in it, which I actually really enjoyed the humor as well, it's still such a beautifully crafted world. The characters are adorable and I love the friendships that bloom in this book and then you get to see them more so in this book. Um, if I had to pick a favorite out of the two, I would pick this one because this book, the villain, the main antagonist of this book is so sympathetic. Like, you know that they're bad, but you also are sympathetic to their cause because you feel bad for them too and the main characters feel bad and it's just such a nuanced story and a nuanced antagonist. I also love the two characters that are introduced in this book because in this book we have Aru and Minnie um, and they're the two Pandava sisters that we've been introduced to and in this book we get introduced to the third Pandava sister. Well we get introduced to the other ones too but like we are following three of them. In this book we're following two of them and I think that both of these books like the quality doesn't go down from book to book which sometimes happens in series and I kind of hate it. I wish I could talk about these better because like I love them so much but I'm like literally having a horrible day and I feel sick so like it's just not working out. In regards to personal attachment I saw a lot of my mother because I'm biracial a lot of my mother's culture in these books and it made me really happy because like I don't have much culture, especially being biracial. You know, I struggle with that a lot and struggling, and I struggle seeing myself in characters a lot. And if I had had these books when I was like a middle grade person, a middle grade child, a young person, I would have appreciated them so, so much. Like I appreciate them so much now, but I know my younger self would have really been happy to see herself at least a little bit in a character um, and like, I don't know. A group of people so I I don't know dude this is gonna be like the worst wrap-up ever but I love these and I cannot wait to read the rest of the series I have the third book haven't read it yet need to get on that but this these are just great <laughs> I do believe in my mid-year book freak out tag I do talk about these and at the time of filming that I probably was a little more coherent so I will link that above wherever it is um, if you want to see me talk about these better especially right when I read them so yeah, I'll leave that for you to see. 
Uh, next we have The Boy in the Smoke by Maureen Johnson. This is a novella. It's like the 0 .05 novella in the Shades of London series. Um, this is the book I read physically this month. This is also the first book I've bought in second hand. I bought this for $1.75 off of Amazon. I did not believe it was going to come to me, but here it is. So the Shades of London series, the first book is The Name of the Star, the second book is The Madness Underneath. I read both of those books in vlogs. I read The Name of the Star in a vlog pre a while ago, and then The Madness Underneath in a Reading Rush vlog. So if you want to see my thoughts on those, I suppose I can link the ones where I read them. So this book follows a character in the series, and this is his like, I don't want to say origin story because it's not like his birth, but I guess it's kind of his origin. It's, it talks about his childhood and how he got his ghost sight ability. By the way, the Shades of London series followed a girl named Rory and she moves from America to London to go to a boarding school and she discovers after having a near-death experience that she can see ghosts. Now, to explain that, basically there are some people who are gen genetically predisposed to have a sight that lets them see ghosts, but the only way to unlock it is if you have a near-death experience between like the ages of 1 and 18. So Rory has a near-death experience, she can see ghosts now, and in the first book there is a Jack the Ripper copycat killer going around killing, <laughs> and she needs to link up with the Shades, who are also able to see ghosts, to find the killer. <laughs> so yeah, that's the premise of the series. Whoa! That's the premise of the series. This book follows a character named Steven, and he's in the series, and it follows how he got his sight, and it also talks about his childhood. Uh, you get more insight into his character. I don't think you need to read this before reading. Well, technically you don't need to read this at all, <laughs> but if you do want to read it, I would recommend reading it after you read The Name of the Star, which is the first book, because it becomes more relevant in The Madness Underneath, which is the second book, because in the second book they talk more about like Stephen becomes a little bit more relevant and he talks a little bit more about his past so it's good to have like this because you already know it and you can like kind of when he briefly mentions things you can kind of fill in the gaps so yeah I gave this three to five stars by the way um there was nothing bad or good about it it was just like fine um yeah <laughs> I I really like Stephen so it was nice reading about his past even though his past is like depressing but yeah, I give this one five stars. I actually really like that series, although I've given all the books in the series three stars. But like, I don't know if this makes sense. It makes sense in my mind, but I can love something, but also give it three stars, you know what I mean? Because like, I, th I can realize that the writing is not like top, top tier and the characters are not like top, top tier, but I love the reading experience and I love the books anyway. So I give them three stars because of their quality, but like, I personally really, really like them. You know, so I do love the series. <laughs> If that makes sense. But yeah, that's that. Last book I read was Full Disclosure by Cameron Garrett. This is a book. Wow, I don't know where I was going with that. This book follows a girl named Simone <laughs> and she has HIV. And basically, uh, I know this book's premise, I just don't know how to give you a synopsis. So it follows Simone. She has HIV. She's in high school. Um, she has just moved to a new school because at the old school they found out that she had HIV and then she got bullied for it basically. So yeah, she moves to the new school. She has a crush on this dude. Since she got, starts getting blackmailed by somebody, um, basically saying that if she doesn't like break it off with the dude she likes, she, the person will reveal that she has HIV basically. I gave this book three to five stars and like I honestly don't know what went wrong for me with this book because I do think this book is important especially for like HIV like I can't speak on the HIV rep and such I don't know if the author has HIV I know the author's black so its own voice is black rep but I do think it's really important the HIV rep in this like I learned a lot about HIV in this book um which was cool this book also talks a lot about being LGBTQ plus which I didn't love the conversation around that. There was just like a sp kind of a specific event in this book that upset me in regards to that. Hello, I'm editing this video right now and I'm gonna just dip in a bit here. Um, in regards to that, uh, in this book, the main character is questioning their sexuality. I'd say like by curious basically. And like there's a scene in which like a character invalidates their questioning of their sexuality and like it's kind of wrapped up in the end but I was not satisfied by that so that's what I kind of mean here um yeah I didn't like that also I never mentioned this but her dad Simone's dad in the beginning 
comes with her to a gyno appointment and it's like all up in her business and uh it struck me as vaguely pedophilic i know it wasn't meant to be that way but creepy dad didn't like that if your parent when you were like 17 years old is coming with you to gyno appointments tell them to stop like especially if they're your dad like i didn't like that i don't like that at all uh so i did not enjoy that scene at all it was like it completely was not meant to come off that way i know that it just did. <sighs> I didn't really care for any of the characters at all. And like, it felt like a lot of the time the kid, like the, the author was trying to tell me about the character relations instead of showing me that they like care about each other. I thought that Miles and Simone's relationship was really cute. Like I liked their relationship together. It was really, I don't know, heartwarming because there was, it was unproblematic, you know what I mean? And, and he eats her out and doesn't expect anything in return. And we love a man like that in again to say that this book is very sex positive which i really appreciated that's one scene that illustrates that as well but there's like some scenes about masturbation and such that were very sex positive i like those conversations in this book i listened to the audiobook of this and i just could not get into this book for the longest time i would be listening and i'd have to like go back three minutes and like listen again i just could not get into it i did not jive with the writing at all i don't know what it is about the writing but it was very clunky to me like i really did not enjoy the writing um, and yeah, <laughs> that's all I gotta say. Honestly, this is the worst wrap-up ever. I barely remember anything about these books, uh, except for these two. I remember a lot about these, I just can't talk about these non-spoilery. Um, I barely, I just don't remember what I had to say about them before, which is really upsetting, wow. But yeah, at least I talked about them. This is definitely not the most informative wrap-up, but I will say, like, none of these books were bad. Obviously, I think these two are literally perfect, but, like, these two weren't bad by any means. They just weren't it for me, you know what I mean? <sighs> so yeah, these are the four books I read in June. Um, my July wrap-up will be coming out soon. I'm hoping it'll be better. That's been my June wrap-up that's extremely late. I've been Bailey. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.